On April 5th, 1815, on the island of Sambawa, in the region of modern-day Indonesia, Mount Tabora erupted, killing an estimated 70,000 people living nearby. It's by far the most powerful eruption in recorded human history. Scientists estimate that the volcano pumps something like 60 million tons of ash into the atmosphere. The resulting particles in the air blocked out much of the sun's heat, leading to what's popularly called the year without summer. Cold temperatures and midsummer frosts of that year devastated agricultural output. And the famines to follow added another 40,000 to the death toll. Now, one wonders whether the worst global catastrophe in anyone's memory combined with the infamous French emperor Napoleon's return earlier that year from exile, didn't have some thinking about the last days. And we've already heard about famines and wars in Revelation chapter 6. In chapter 8, we read last time of the, the first four trumpets. And circling back to the second, we're told the second angel sounded his trumpet and something like a huge mountain all ablaze was thrown into the sea a third of the city turned uh, excuse me a third of the sea turned into blood a third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed there were no reports in 1815 of seas turning to blood but it certainly might have seemed like a mountain was thrown into the sea now, the blood like the hail in verse 7, the darkness in verse 12, and the locusts in chapter 9, all remind of the destructive plagues unleashed upon Egypt. The plagues you may remember in Exodus gave a sense of decreation, where that which God had made was coming undone. It's also worth remembering that, that the plagues did not induce repentance but a further hardening of Pharaoh's heart. They were God's judgment. And coming back to Revelation, there's, there's some debate as to whether the mountain falling into the sea is intended to be understood literally. Jeremiah 51, the Lord declares that he will repay Babylon. Verse 25, the Lord says, I am against you. You destroying mountain, you who destroy the whole earth, declares the Lord, I will stretch out my hand against you, roll you off the cliffs and make you a burned out mountain. In Revelation 18, uh, we're told uh, a mighty angel picked up a boulder the size of a large millstone and threw it into the sea and said, with such violence, the great city Babylon will be thrown down, never to be found again. And perhaps the mountain is a nation. Without getting us too far afield, uh, in Mark chapter 11, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Many commentators conclude that Jesus' reference to this mountain is the Temple Mount. It's a statement very much in keeping with the rest of, of Mark 11. It's the language of judgment. Not against the hard-hearted Pharaoh, not against a prideful nation, be it Babylon or Rome, but against those who claim to be God's own people, but who set themselves in opposition to God's own purpose. Now, however you choose to interpret the trumpets, uh, literally or metaphorically, the text certainly induces us to take them seriously. Those who set themselves in opposition to God, be it a great person, a nation, or even those who claim to be God's people, the consequences are serious and they are unavoidable. How's that for an encouragement? I'll see you next time.